Today, the first Sunday of Lent, this Holy Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Madeleine Sai, whose anniversary occurs around now. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Dominus Vobiscum. Dear brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our Lord. Misericordia nostri omnipotens Deus, et dimissis peccatis nostris, perducat nos et vita eterna. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, The priest shall take the pannier from your hand and lay it before the altar of the Lord your God. Then, in the sight of the Lord your God, you must make this pronouncement. My father was a wandering Aramean. He went down into Egypt to find refuge there, few in numbers. But there he became a nation, great, mighty and strong. The Egyptians ill-treated us. They gave us no peace and inflicted harsh slavery on us. But we called on the Lord, the God of our fathers. The Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, our toil and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with mighty hand and outstretched arm, with great terror and with the signs of the wonders. He brought us here and gave us this land, a land where milk and honey flow. Here then I bring the first fruits of the produce of the soil that you, Lord, have given me. You must then lay them before the Lord your God and bow down in the sight of the Lord your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Scripture says, the word, that is the faith we proclaim, is very near to you. It is on your lips and in your heart. If your lips confess that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. By believing from the heart that you are made righteous, by confessing with your lips you are saved. When scripture says, those who believe in him will have no cause for shame, it makes no distinction between Jew and Greek. All belong to the same Lord who is rich enough, however many ask for his help. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit through the wilderness, being tempted there by the devil for 40 days. During that time he ate nothing, and at the end he was hungry. Then the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to turn into a loaf. But Jesus replied, Scripture says man does not live on bread alone. Then leading him to a height, the devil showed him in a moment of time all the kingdoms of the world and said to him, I will give you all this power and the glory of these kingdoms, for it has been committed to me and I will give it to anyone I choose. Worship me then and it shall all be yours. But Jesus said to him, Scripture says, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. Then he led him to Jerusalem and made him stand on the parapet of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said to him, throw yourself down from here. For our scripture says, he will put his angels in charge of you to guard you. And again, they will hold you up on their hands in case you hurt your foot against a stone. But Jesus answered him, it has been said you must not put the Lord your God to the test. Having exhausted all these ways of tempting him, the devil left him to return at the appointed time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord. We have begun Lent ever so conscious of the poor people in Ukraine with those scenes of terrible violence and bloodshed. How could any of us have viewed those scenes of the last 10 days without shedding copious tears 
because not only are those people fellow members of the human race with us, with all their rights and dignity, but they're also our brothers and sisters in the Christian faith. I've known many Ukrainian Catholics down the years, and they're well known for their deep faith and piety. And if I can dare to say it, the confidence of those people who remain so certain of victory in the face of such aggression is a parable of the Christian life and what we have embarked upon this Lent. Peace is a consequence of war and of struggle and of that intimate interior struggle which each and every one of us must keep up against everything in our life and in the world which does not belong to God. And that is why we go into the wilderness with Jesus. Metaphorically speaking, so that we can be trained for this warfare, so that we can learn the tactics and take up the weapons that we have in our arsenal. Because you see, in the desert, everything is paired back. There are no distractions to deflect us from the basic questions that we need to ask ourselves. Like, who is God? Who am I? What's the purpose of my life? Where am I going? Towards heaven? Or away from it? And these fundamental questions are often so overwhelming that we prefer to divert, divert ourselves with all kinds of distractions. But in Lent, in the desert, we can again learn the basics. How to pray, how to fast, how to do charity. The evil one will always try to divert us from the true path. He did it when he appeared to Jesus at the end of his 40 days. The devil will try in a thousand different ways to divert us from what is good and what is ordered towards God. So it's good to confront these demons right at the start and ask myself, how does the devil tempt me? The devil said to Jesus, turn those stones into bread. Now those stones on the desert floor probably would have looked like tiny loaves of bread to Jesus. So tempting. Personally I find it tough missing one meal, let alone fasting for 40 days. So the first temptation is that we focus on our, our lives on material things and on the gratification of our sensual desires. The devil then leads Jesus up to a great height. This is code, biblical code, for the pinnacle of society. Here the temptation is to glory, to honour, to being seen and admired by everybody. You know, many people don't worry particularly, or they're not tempted by sensual things, but they do care about honour, about being seen, about being admired about being at the very top of society where everybody watches you. That's the ego, isn't it? Inflated to an unhealthy level. St Thomas Aquinas says that glory is just a flag of virtue. Saying, you know, look here, look what I'm doing, look at this moral goodness in me. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with honour in itself. But if you seek glory for its own sake, then you're saying that I'm deliberately avoiding the virtue and drawing attention to the flag. So Jesus dismisses the devil by saying, do not put the Lord your God to the test. The final temptation, the third temptation, is to power. The devil then took Jesus up to the parapet of the temple. 
into a more refined area of temptation. Not sensual pleasure or honour, but power. Power is one of the great, if not the greatest motivating factor of all human history. Many of the great world leaders from the ancient emperors to modern day dictators have been motivated by the desire to wield power. But we're all tempted by it. Whatever little power we have, we like, we wield it. I think we can see the manifestations of this in what's happening in Europe right now. The desire for power, to wield that power, to have dominion over others, whatever the cost. The price we pay if we make power the central focus of our life is the worship of the devil, which is to say, the loss of our soul. Jesus himself says it. What does it profit a person if he gains the whole world, if he dominates the whole of Europe, but loses his very soul? That's why the spiritual life is all about surrendering to God's power, allowing God to dominate us. When we make the dominion of others paramount, You've lost your soul and you've worshipped the devil. So Jesus dismisses the devil saying, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Sensual pleasure, honour, power. The three big temptations we face. And the antidote is prayer, fasting and charity. If only we saw this clearly. If only the world saw this clearly, we would not be witnessing the horrific events of these times. But one woman did see this clearly, and she was sent by Jesus to caution and alert us. You know, in 1917, our Blessed Lady appeared to the three shepherd children in Fatima, and on that occasion, on the third apparition, actually, in July 1917, Mary said... I will come to ask for the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart and the communion of reparation on the first Saturdays. If my requests are fulfilled, Russia will be converted and there will be peace. If not, it will spread its errors throughout the world, provoking wars and persecutions to the Church. The good will be martyred the Holy Father, the Pope, will suffer much. Several nations will be annihilated. But at last, my Immaculate Heart will triumph, provided enough people pray the Rosary for peace. This week, the bishops in the Ukraine petitioned the Pope to consecrate Russia and the Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, because she is the one we see right at the start of the Bible, right at the start of salvation history, the woman who crushed the head of the evil one. So I urge you to take up the rosary again, because the, weapon, the, the rosary is the most powerful weapon we have in our armory. The rosary might not look very much like a weapon to you, you probably can't kill anyone with a rosary, unless you strangle them. But we're not into that. But we can use that as a powerful prayer to overcome war and violence in our world by just doing what Mary asked us to do. Pray the rosary daily for peace. It might not be too late. There's always time. It's never too late in God's eyes. So as we go into Lent now, let's do so confidently, full of hope, remembering what hope stands for, the acronym, having only positive expectations. And filled with that hope, let's turn to God and his Blessed Mother in complete trust. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.
Credo hit unum Deum, Atem omnipotente, Acorem cerie eterne, Visibili homo omnium, Et invisibili Et in unum Domin, Iesum Christus, Filium Dei unigenit, Et ex Padre Natu, ante omnia secula, Deum de Deum, Lumen de Lumen, Deum Perro, de Deum Perro, Genitu non fatu, Con substantialem Padre, Equem omnia fatu, Qui propter nos homines, et propter nostram salutem, descendite et cedis, et incarnatus et de Spiritus Santo, et Maria Virgine. Trusting in the compassion of God, we bring our petitions before his throne of mercy. That during the season of Lent, all who follow Christ may avail themselves of the Father's mercy, especially in confession. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For peace in our world, and especially that the war in Ukraine may be brought to a swift end and peace and harmony restored. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those in our parish and diocese who are preparing this Lent for Easter sacraments, may they come to know and love Jesus Christ and his church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our young adults who begin their preparation for the sacrament of confirmation this weekend, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those who have died recently, Mary Rigdon. Also for the dead whose anniversaries occur about this time. May their souls, the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God. Let us now turn to Our Lady, Queen of Peace, and pray. 
Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life and our goodness and our hope. To thee do we cry, but by his children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping this spirit. Turn then, most gracious Anna, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our Lord Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet virgin. In silence, let us tell God, our Father, of any special needs. Father, have mercy on your church in its need, and hear the prayers we make to you for your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and your mind may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings. For with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable sacred time, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through who Christ our Lord, by us abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, he taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the paschal mystery, we might pass over to the eternal paschal feast. And so, with the company of the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus, Deus Amor, Veni succedi et terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all who have created right, who gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the working and power of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself. So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly employ you by the same Spirit. Graciously, make holy these gifts. We are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, Motem Tuam Anunciamus Domine, Et Tuam Resurrectionem Confitemus Domic Venias. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, 
and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ, may make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Er ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritu Sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia saecula saeculorum. Amen. Recepte salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Pater nostra, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuo, adveniat a regnum tuo, iat a voluntas tua, sicut in cielo, et in terra. Anem nostrum quodidiam da nobis hodium, et dimitai nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitis debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationi, Sed libera nos amalo. Libera nos quesumus domine ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut ope misericordiae tue diuti, et a peccatus simus semper liberi, et ab omniperturbatione securi, expectantes beatum spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Qui atu est regnum potestas, et gloria in se meo. Domini Iesu Christi, quid existi apostolis tuis, pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meam da vobis, ne respicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tuae, eumque secundum voluntatum tuam pacificare et coadunari dinieris, qui vivis et regnus in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. We show each other a sign of peace. Qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anius Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anius Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace.
Etre anus dei, etre qui tolit peccata mundi, beati qui acenem anivocati sum. Domine, non sum dignus, ut in tres subtectum meo, sed tantum dic verbo, et sanabitur anima mea.
Let us pray. Renewed with this heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word that proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Throughout Lent, on the Friday evenings at 7 o'clock, there will be the Way of the Cross and Benediction. If you wish to help with the humanitarian crisis in the Ukraine, you can do this by following the link on the newsletter this week or on the parish website to aid to the church in need which is a charity there right on the front line in the Ukraine bringing support and help and relief um, you'll find all the details as I say on the parish website and the newsletter or indeed directly with the aid to the church in need website you might also take a cathod envelope from the back of church and return it next Sunday or similarly and more quickly of course visit their website uh, to donate there. I wish you all a very blessed week ahead, this first week of Lent. May God fill you with his grace and blessing as we make this pilgrimage now together towards Holy Week and Easter. Nominus Fabiscum Benedicat Vos Omnipotens Deus Pater et Filii et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen.
ite misa est, Deo gratiam.